I'm Anna Kaiser and this is Life of the Eye. In this episode, I would like to tell you about my experience in the intensive care unit. This was a four-week rotation and I had the pleasure of working with two amazing RDs. The patient population in the ICU, of course, is they, these people are very ill and they have to be in a place where they can be monitored very frequently and also you have to be much more careful with, with your nutrition plan. So uh, for that reason we had a nutrition class every morning bright and early uh, and we were discussing things like ventilation, um, hemodynamic stability um, and GI's um, role in immunity. And that was probably my favorite part about this rotation, those early morning discussions with the RDs, because that's when we really uh, had a chance to learn and discuss um, all those things that we would see when we uh, treat the patients. And actually, we did even get to try a ventilator, and I gotta say, it was really difficult. It's not surprising to me that a lot of these patients would be sedated in order for them to be um, intubated in a, in a proper way because a lot of patients would start fighting the, in, uh, the ventilator. The patients that we would co commonly see in the ICU are uh, people who have had maybe a stroke or a heart attack or have had a major surgery like a liver transplant. Um, and they are commonly, as I said, uh, sedated and uh, ventilated so when, uh, when we went to see patients, um, and if there was no family around, the visits would be very short. I would just basically do the nutrition-focused physical exam. Um, and the reason why that is so important to do every week is that when a um, person is critically ill, the metabolism is changed into um, taking, um, breaking some of the muscle down and the fat down to make sure that the, all the vital organs have plenty of nutrients to to keep going and to heal and so we would uh, very often see a lot of muscle breakdown and muscle wasting and also fat wasting so it's important for us to keep an eye on that because we also want to make sure that we're giving them enough nutrients through tube feeds or TPN and to minimize that uh, muscle breakdown. Now nutrition support also in the ICU is a little bit different from the acute care floors um, because we have to monitor much more closely and so we would use actual paper flow sheets to um, keep an eye on their labs every morning put down their labs and their meds and um, everything else that's going on with them to make sure that we are um, adjusting our nutrition support uh, appropriately so for example for TPN every every day we have to order a new TPN bag and every day we have a chance to change some of the things that we put in there. So not only do we give protein and carbon and fat in the TPN bag, we also give vitamins and minerals and electrolytes. So let's say a patient had low potassium level, we have the chance to add more potassium into that TPN bag and next morning see what, what our change did and then adjust further. So I think that was very interesting um, to keep an eye on and see what our changes would do to the uh, blood levels the next day. For tube feeds also, uh, it was uh, a little bit different in two ways. One, For one, um, often we would use two tube feed formulas at the same time instead of just one. So, um, because this is because um, often it's hard to find just one that fits the bill perfectly. Um, often the energy needs are much higher than their protein needs. So if you would use a basic formula, there might not be enough protein in that. But if you mixed a basic formula with something that has a lot of protein, you probably will get to that sweet spot. Also in the ICU these patients have procedures very often so during and before those procedures they often have to be NPO so nothing not even tube feeds can go into their body so um, this means that you might not get even close to the goal to feed volume if you have those uh, moments of NPO a lot so it's called the MEN protocol and the nurses actually use that to determine how much they have to uh, increase the rate of the tube feed before the procedure or before going NPO or afterwards. And this way we were able to maximize the amount that they would get through the tube feeds. So I think that was very neat um, because these, 
these patients really need their nutrition. Overall, I really enjoyed this rotation like I have my previous ones. Um, this was not as stressful as I anticipated it to be. You know how a ICU setting sounds really scary because you know all the patients are going to be really ill. But it wasn't as bad and um, all the morning classes and all the learning that uh, I got from throughout the rotation from the RDs uh, really supported my learning from the previous rotations. Everything seemed to come together during this rotation and I just really hope that all the things I learned will stick in there. Um, next I'm going to go to pediatrics. It was going to be another four week rotation and I love kids so I'm really looking forward to that. And so I will see you in four weeks. Bye. Uh,